this season on Money Court. Kevin O'Leary and Bethany Franco preside over a series of business disputes that could cripple a company. How much did you put into the business? We're talking about half a million dollars. 750,000. Pre-money was 35 million. This is a real business. They all need solutions, and they need it fast. You're shipping it in a box. Absolutely. No, this is a disaster. You're in a garage band. Take both of those ideas behind the barn and shoot them. You want to fully cash out? Yes. Don't say take it in the back of the barn and shoot it, because I'm not. This is going to make it. The cases are real. It's you a walk a rumba. That's, That's hot. hot. That's hot. This is not a shoe I can wear. You're going to break your ankle. You're going to have a liability <laughs> suit. The money is real. Five million after tax. Everybody has a number. You're going to tell him we're not selling it. What's the number? Talk about cash flow. The decisions are legally binding. Time to deliberate. We're in fairyland, OK? We got to get back to Earth. This is a show. You got to give it one chance. I agree with that, but I don't Well, Just give me a second to think. Breaking news. I think Kevin's right. I think this is one of my favorite projects I've ever worked on. Money Court, where every decision is a business decision. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Wonderful, I've taken your business name. Thank goodness we're in a court. We don't have to wait. I'll sue you right now. Let's deliberate. What does your wife think of this partnership? She was fascinated. She really was. And a lot of her friends, too, who know you. I mean, you're well known. Uh, you know, with women. There's no question about it. Right. You're controversial also. Yes. The answer to our problem is in that story. It, the answer to our nightmares is in that story. We're all Thank falling asleep. I'm okay, here. let's do this. No, we're going to keep what, it because you look like an idiot. You, Mr. Wonderful's never an idiot, so we'll do it this way. <laughs> they were very interested in talking about it. And I said, no, she's going to be my partner on, on Money Court. We're not telling, I'm not telling you because he, you know, sleeps in a mattress <laughs> filled with <laughs> money. <laughs> So what, she's I'm leaving Housewives? I said, yeah, she's done. She wants to elevate her brand. And they just really got into it, saying, why would she give that up? I mean, everybody's asking the same question, yep. right? I think this is going to be the big thing about the show. I think people yep. say, why did she do that? No, I think they'll get it right away. The people who I know me. I certainly get it. I certainly get there's it. There's a saying on TikTok, the girls that get it, get it. The girls who don't, don't. Every time we ask another question, we peel the onion. We're peeling the onion. What is your parenting style? So. I learned a lesson from my mother that I've now applied for my own style, and it was this. When I graduated from college, she came to my graduation and she said to me, of course I'll never forget this, the dead bird under the nest never learns how to fly. And I said, what the hell does that mean? She said, no more checks. I've paid for you from birth to the last day of college. I've loaned you money all the way through. I'm done. I said, mom, I don't have a job. She said, I don't care. We paid for your education, or at least half of it, so that you could get a job. Now you have to go get one. I went, whoa, I hadn't thought that through. Have you done hard labor? Yes, I laid bricks and I collected garbage when I was young. The hardest job I ever had was the assistant that carried the bricks to the brick layer. Then he taught me how to lay the bricks. I'm talking cinder blocks. That is hard work. Here's the hardest <laughs> thing for someone who collects garbage, rain, because people put out stuff like sofas and it rains on them and then they weigh 5,000 pounds. And it smells. It stinks. I don't want to do that again. That was a big education for me. She didn't like entitlement. She hated the idea that somehow it would be a free ride for me afterwards. And I've done that to my kids. I've said, you know what, I'll pay for till the last day of college, and after that, you're on your own. But have you been strict? Are you indulgent? Are you strict and indulgent? Are you the disciplinarian? Do you get heated? Have you yelled? Like, what's the dynamic? You're wearing a stupid shoe. You're a stupid person. We're talking <laughs> about. A, a foldable sandal. Yeah, you know, the, the truth is, in the, in the young age, my wife raised the kids because I was always on the road for mm -hmm. the business. And so I missed that part of it. That's the truth. I mean, I just wasn't there from their ages of three to probably 11 because that was the learning company experience for me. I sold that business for over $4 billion. It set the family up pretty well. I'm not asking anybody that we hire to do anything that I wasn't willing to do. I'm asking him to believe in as much of what we're doing. And I think you know this. There's no balance in life if you're an entrepreneur. There's no soccer games on Sunday, and there's no getting home at there 6 o'clock. There is. No, I miss nothing. I miss nothing. Well, I'm I, amazed. Yeah, I miss nothing. I've never, I've never had a nanny. Yeah. I, li I literally, that's number one priority. Every scheduled thing. You see, my daughter's here, and it's, I'm, this will be done, and I'll But what was it like when you were working before you sold your company? Well, that's the thing, too. It was lucky. It was the same year that I had my daughter was the year that I, that okay, I made my so first dollar. I didn't have that I, I agree. Aw, you need a hug.
you know, you want a hug too? I don't want to be like, yes, that. yes. For me, and I had a very challenging childhood. For me, that was a real, just instinctive priority. I had her later too, though I was 38. I only have had one child. Women are doing that these days. And I just, I just knew that I would never get that time back. But also, it helps you organize. You can't do, you can't do being fit, sleeping, being successful, having a good sex life, being a good parent. I pick like three different lanes, honestly. I, I, you, can't be, you can't have it all at the same time. That, that is a myth. Hold up. How are you running a business that you want to scale into an airport while having a full-time job? What's your relationship style for successful relationship? Give me your tips to a successful relationship. It's time. It's how much time you can allocate to each other. That's you think more time definitely equals better? It's not about anything else except the quality of the time and the experience. If you go look at relationships that fall apart, I always thought it was infidelity, but it's not, it's money. Yeah. You know, nine out of 10 times, uh, I, I did the research, I was writing a book about this called Men, Women, Money, and I went to see divorce lawyers and I thought they'd tell me, well, they screwed around with the nanny, all this stuff. Yeah. Never. It's always about the fact that one spouse outspent the other and put debt on the family. When I was losing millions of dollars in the wine business, my wife came to me and said, enough. This is hurting our family. You're losing so much money now, and you're just an arrogant ass and you think you can make it in the wine business, and you're really starting to cost us a lot. I'm gonna give you six more months to break even, and then we're out of this, or I'm divorcing you. Then maybe I'm just lucky that I Ha made money and then had my daughter. Maybe that's a good tip for well, people. It, it is. Make your money, also, then have kids because you're not lucky. divided. It's also lucky because not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Kumbaya, cry me a river. We're making a ton of money remotely. Well, that's all you seem to care about. I care about the culture and the nature of the business and how it's going. It's a subsegment of the population that, that wants to do that. And no, but for people who want to be an entrepreneur, also in a rush to get, I'm talking to women, truthfully, in a rush to get the ring. Like go be independent, make your own money, then you have all the choices, not only with, with, with as a parent, but also with as a partner. And you're 50-50? 51, 49. Whoa! Yeah, you've got to find the right partner that understands what you want. So many of these relationships fail that are accelerated. I mean, just getting married for the sake of getting married is not a good plan. No, but that, people do it all the time. You've got to think about families as, as financial businesses in some way because you have to somehow finance them. So we have a solution that we both agree on and that we think gets you to where you want to be and makes both of you happy. A lot of parents both work. You think about the stress. If you get married really young, you don't have a financial base. Yet they do, and they are successful. But that was the old America. No, I know. I would describe my parenting style as strict indulgence. I'm telling you that if you guys want to grow this business and you are aligned, that's what we think you should do. I don't indulge in um, superficial things for my daughter, but experiences I, I indulge. I think that's very good. Travel. Because that, that will enrich her later. Yeah. But, you know, just... Lavishing kids with stuff they don't need is not a good it's idea. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's disgusting and it's just a terrible idea. It's the path of least resistance. You can't crush somebody's dreams. Yes, you can. You can give them a new dream. I should show you my passport because my middle name is Crushing Dreams. Well, that's... Because I hate to see people wasting time like this. It's not wasting time. It's enjoying time. But, I, you know, for me, it's, it's about giving them the ability to go s solve for themselves and they have done so and I'm pretty proud of my kids so far. The thing that I think matters is time. Can you spend enough? The older they get, the more their lives are pulled away from you, and you got to find time when you can. Yeah. And well, they're like, what you put in, you get out. What you put into your kids, you get out. It's really a great investment. There's a total ROI, and I see the difference between people who just mail it in, who are on their phones all the time and distracted. You have to be present. When I'm here, I'm present. I'm totally present. So when I'm there, I'm totally present. But if you mix the two, that's when you get into trouble. Kevin can't taste brownies, but he can taste money. What kind of numbers are you doing? The numbers will not lie. If you're half distracted here thinking about your parenting, if you're half distracted when you're with your kids thinking about your business, then it all goes to shit. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this.